sweet. All right, so yeah, you guys can see my screen. Check this out, this is Jeff Mills at a festival. So, did everyone see that? Did that video work? Yes. Awesome. Thank you, that one guy who's saying yes. <laughs> no one else, <laughs> no no one else do that because that would get chaotic. <laughs> but, um, you know, so what you just saw, that's Jeff Mills playing a humongous festival with just one drum machine. So he's, he's been DJing, but he's taking, he literally takes 15 minutes of his performance to stop all the music and just mess around with this one piece of gear, this one drum machine. It's the Roland 909. I'm sure most of you know what that is. But if you don't, it's one of the most, yeah, classic drum machines. Um, pretty much defined house music. You know, if you listen to all of your favorite 90s house songs from like Show Me Love to Pump Up The Jam, etc., they all use this one drum machine and it's, uh, He's just, <laughs> he's literally using nothing else but that machine to like rock the shit out of this humongous festival. And I think, you know, it's a testament to what you can do with very little, right? You know, you th I think a lot of people, they open Ableton and they're like, holy shit, there's so much that's possible here. I don't even know where to begin. And Jeff Mills is showing us that like, bro, you can literally just use one type of sound and rock you know thousands of people's minds so i just think that's an insanely kind of like interesting way to think about this you know where it's like you know my goal for today like we're gonna mess around trying to make a beat and i'm gonna see how simple i can keep it you know i'm gonna limit myself to just using the 909 for today and if i want maybe like one other sound you know we'll see what happens but there is so much that you can do with so little. And I think that that is a good place to start. Shit, there's 25 people <laughs> who missed that, but hey, we're recording it. Let's see. Okay, without further ado, let me make sure that I can just do one last thing and type. Um, okay, perfect. Um, Okay, so here, let's, um, I'm just going to begin making some, some beats and trying to talk about it. And if at any point you have questions, um, I will do my very best to follow along. Okay, and yes, you're recording. Yes, I am recording. If you bail later, no worries. Um, I also want to say, like, my goal for this weekend is I want to try and get you guys, especially if you're brand new, to just start doing stuff. So at the end of today, I'm going to have like, you know, we'll have like a little challenge or something for you to send me back a small beat. And I will give, I'll pick like a couple favorites, review them tomorrow and give all of my favorite um, beats, like the people, um, a free sample pack and some of my unreleased tunes, just to keep this kind of fun and cool. force you guys to do so. Because like, <laughs> that's the key, that's the key. Like if you're having fun and you actually spend time doing this, you will always continue to get better. Um, all right, so, um, okay, Rawls needs help back in the chat. So for those of you who are late, um, I just showed a video of Jeff Mills rocking a festival with one drum machine. He's just playing the 909 drum machine and people are losing their shit. And, you know, I think this is a really good place to begin the conversation because I think with, with the drums in particular, um, you know, there's a lot of, there's, there's two sides to it. You know, you have to pick the sounds and then you have to figure out what to do with them. By just using the 909, we don't have to worry about picking the sounds and automatically it sounds like we have a $7,000 piece of equipment. 
everyone's always wishing they had one of these things. They're super expensive. And if you got the free trial of Ableton, you're now in possession of a 99, of a 909 for like <laughs> three months. So fucking use it because you got it for free. Um, all right, so here, for those that don't know, this is Ableton. Um, this is the timeline view. This is where uh, our song will come into life. Um, these things on the right, these are tracks and these are, um, yeah, just our instruments and our sounds. So to create a new one, just so it's more simple, I'm gonna delete all of these. And to create a new one, right click and click insert audio track. The, uh, well, that's audio, shit, I should do insert MIDI track. And the command key is shift, command, what is it? Shift, command, uh, T, okay, so. And I also, I wanna say, I am not the most technically proficient producer, nor am I the most knowledgeable. Like many of my friends know way more about Ableton than I do, but I think the things that I'm good at are having fun. I am good at asking for help when I'm stuck. And when I'm discouraged, I feel like I'm pretty good at powering through it or at least you know, if I quit that day, I'll get back in the game tomorrow. And I think those are kind of my, my biggest strengths. And I think they can often, they can often uh, be more valuable than how talented you are and how knowledgeable you are. Um, and yeah, let's, let's just get after it. Okay, so the 909, and this is my first time making music in front of like 200 people all at once. So let's get it. So. The first thing that I'm gonna do is make a new MIDI clip. So to do that, it's a little tricky. You highlight the section that you want. You can right click and then click on the button that says insert MIDI clip, okay? It's a little tricky. You can also highlight and do shift command M. That is probably one of the most difficult parts of what we need to do. If you've gotten this far, then you might be able to make a fucking sick beat by the end of today. So double click on this square um, and type command L. This will create a loop so that we can listen to what we're doing over and over again, which is the basis of house music. So this, and I know everyone who's like a sick producer because there's some amazing producers in here, like God damn it, I'm wasting all my time. But trust me, the beginner's mindset, man, there's something about these restrictions that'll go a long way. So. Um, this is where we're going to put all our notes, right click and click on fixed grid, choose 116. It should look like this. This is one beat of music and here's where we can put all our notes and wherever you double click, you're going to get sounds. Oh shit. Also, if I didn't mention over here, click drums, go to kit dash core 909. This will load up a 909 and you will immediately sound like Jeff Mills, and uh, this is what it sounds like here. Okay. Amazing. You're like, wow, <laughs> that's <laughs> super lame. Um, and so you can type in these notes, and if we press play, listen to what happens. Okay, sweet. That's hardly a song, but shows the mechanics here. So I'm gonna just like start with the most basic stuff. Um, and I really hope that people are following along. I'm glad people are digging this beat. Unfortunately, I deleted it. So it's, it's bad. damn it, we'll have to make a new one. Um, all right, so for those of you that don't understand what's happening, um, these are our sounds and we can type in these squares to trigger those various sounds. So you can see they're nicely labeled to kick, rim, if I click this button, I can audition them, kick, rim, snare, clap, hat, blah, blah. So for, you know, house and techno, putting one on every beat, sounds like this. If you want to make house music, you can take a clap and put it on the second and fourth beat like this. If you want to make house music more, you can put up a hi-hat on every upbeat. You got to show me love, right? Like it's the fucking do 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 do. That's you're you're immediately 
by just sticking with the nine or nine, I know it's like overly obvious and might even feel like cheating, but it immediately has a drum aesthetic that I will appreciate because it's a classic type of sound and you can't go wrong. And um, it's funny because I put out some music on a really like hip underground label called Shall Not Fade. Um, came out a couple weeks ago. And one of the songs that I had on this EP was straight up the Ableton stock 909 plugin with a free tape emulator that I'll give you guys tomorrow. And I added no other drums, just the stock Ableton 909. But, you know, I think the, the program, like the beat that I made was like nice and it just works. Okay. So yeah, like, even Shall Not Fade, it's a super cool label. Even if, if you haven't heard of it, it's like one of those European hip exclusive labels that is super picky. I've sent them tons of music and got so much music rejected. So it was like the fact that they liked this one song, I was like, no way, that's insane. And it was like the easiest drum beat to make because I just used this and now you literally could do that. You're welcome. I hope that helps. But so let's, you know, let's, let's dive in a little bit further. So, you know, this is like where I, this is the challenge that I have for you guys today that applies to both beginners and people who are, you know, super experienced. See what you can do with just the 909. All right. And let's, uh, let's take it from there. So I think um, I'm feeling like, so I'm, you know, I'm just kind of going with the flow and I'm feeling inspired by the Jeff Mills energy. And the cool thing about the 909 is you can have this kick drum that's like really great for the foundation of your track and instead of needing a bass line you can use these toms um i would recommend in general if you do put a bass line in your song i would i tend to avoid layering a bass line note and a tom at the same time because it might get a little muddy but with every rule there's an exception and you can always supply things so here i'm going to just put a couple um, hits randomly. I don't know what this is going to sound like, and I'm just going to listen to it. You know, I actually have a better way to do this. Let's listen to the kick, and I'm going to add one tom at a time. So I sped it up to 135. Not super fast, but uh, Jeff Mills would would hopefully be okay with it. So I'm going to add one tom note at a time, and just I'm just going to avoid putting them on the kick, so that way they bounce off each other. So. Sounds pretty dope. Here's what this sounds like. Uh, that works too. What does this sound like? All of these options could be great, all right? Like they all work and that's why, that's what's cool about the 9 or 9 is like even very simple ideas can have a very satisfying quality to it. So I'm gonna add a couple more. Okay, here, how about this? I'll let you guys vote. One, two, or three. Which pattern should I do? Come on, someone text, one, two, three. Okay, two, I'm seeing a bunch of twos. Ah, uh, okay, this is like the most simple pattern. Okay. And so what I'm gonna do is, you know, just, I'm gonna go note by note. I'm trying to keep it slow for people who are following along. Very first time using Ableton. If that's you, please get to this point. If not, I will, you're fucked. No, I'm kidding. Message me and I'll help you. All right. So I'm gonna do this. Honestly, this is fine. Like it's so simple, but I kind of fuck with it. All right. So simple, right? You know? And really like, if you keep it simple, almost anything will work. You know, the, when you get complicated, that's where you might run into issues. So when in doubt, keep things really simple. Um, so here's like, so this pattern could be kind of like our foundation. We, it might get more complicated. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of gonna go with the flow. But so let's add some more elements. So maybe, you know, I think maybe let's try adding a clap somewhere. Okay, so I'm feeling like weird. I'm going to do something that I wouldn't normally do. Okay, sick. 
I know it's kind of a weird beat, but I'm literally just fucking around because if I just did like a classic house beat, I'd probably get bored because I've done that too many times. But you, you know, clap on the two and four, which sounds like this. This is great. Like that sounds dope. And maybe I'll even use that in a later section of the song. But to start, I'm feeling weird and let's see what happens. I like this idea of like, <laughs> I don't know why. Um, all right, so then I'm gonna start adding some hi-hats. And I think very quickly, it's gonna sound like club music. Okay, sweet. So with drum programming, one, uh, this is like the super simple shit that I think pro people will actually find pretty useful. Um, so with each sound that you have, there's like four things that you can always fuck with. One is the placement of the sounds, where they are on the, on, on the grid. Placement, the volume, which we'll get to, the length, and the pitch. So let's try and talk about all of those really quickly. So let's just solo the hi-hat for a sec. Okay, so placement. Obviously that's super different than, right? So I'm just gonna put them on all of the upbeats. That's what they're called every time in between all the kick drums, okay? Let's do volume. So let's say I'm gonna add an extra hat. Let's do it here. Okay, look at what volume can do. Let me add a couple more, okay? Very different than this. That might even be a sound better, but the volume, you know, adjusting these bars down here, it's called the velocity. That will change the volume of these different drum sounds. And this is a huge way to get like extra funkiness into your tracks. Um, this shit sounds amazing, especially if I move the placements so that's late. This is how you get swing, like classic house stuff. I, I can also move this hi-hat to a different sound, like closed hat. That's house music, okay? But we're making techno right now. So that's volume. Length is another huge thing. So this open hi-hat, it's quite long. I'm gonna be able to get huge sections of the song to be very different from each other by just adjusting the length of this hi-hat. Check it out. So much, like I know that's, this is so simple, but you can get so much, so much dynamic out of this. And, and just to prove the point, um, here's what I'll do. I'm gonna make a, a separate loop with some hi-hats and I'm going to make them start um, long and then make them short. Okay, here. And check this out. I'm gonna bring our toms back in over here and check this out. Okay. Let's go back to the plugin. So here, start long. Hi hat perfect. You know, it's funny because when you're when you're making a song, and I know this is a very simple beat, you know, you often think like, oh my God, to keep the interest, I need to add all these elements. And you know, my hope is that we, by just really exploring, fucking with placement, volume, length, and pitch, that we can do some cool shit. So another thing that we could think about for pitch with this 909, um, you can see that the word Tom is written three times. There's Tom low, Tom low, Tom mid, Tom high. These are all different pitches. And so it's the same sound, but we can get some. Uh... No, I don't like that. I actually kind of fuck with that. That's pretty cool. It's a little loud. I'm just gonna make it quieter. Okay. I'm down with it. 
Um, all right. And I think that's another big thing is like, it, you know, it's, it's obviously a little vulnerable to try and make a beat live in front of a ton of people. But my, the only thing I can do is just go with my instincts and try my best not to second guess myself. And that, we'll see how that, res, how, uh, what kind of results that yields, but it's, it's, uh, I think it makes a huge, I think it's so much better to just give into your instincts and not question them. Okay, so we've got this beat going. I wanna, you know, so I think, you know, I, I showed what you can do with that knob of adjusting the time with the hi-hat, but Ableton is so nice. It gives you these short one, medium one, long one. So we can just start, we, we don't even need to use those knobs. And I think that's like another aspiration for this exercise is like, I wanna see how much I can do without even using the fancy shit over here. So one thing that Jeff Mills does, which I think is so interesting, is his, the whole idea of his jam is, you know, he's writing new patterns, taking elements in and out, and doing this all kind of just like by, you know, allowing his intuition to guide him. And so, you know, I think, you know, when, you know, a lot of people struggle with like structure. So let's say we have this, this is the loop, all right? I know it's not the best loop ever, and the clap thing is now annoying me, so I'm just going to, let's listen to this. Okay, so a lot of people think, I have a loop, how can I structure it? How can I stretch it out into a song? I think that's, you know, something that we can already begin talking about. You know, you know what you can, you can always add something. So I'm gonna add claps here. I did this by if you highlight a section and do Command D, it'll copy it, all right? And, you know, these clips, you can drag them around. I really, uh, yeah, if, you, if, you need, if you're overwhelmed by these basic things, hop on Ableton for some free tutorials for the super basics, because it's not that hard. Um, so we got this going, then the claps can come in. Now in my head, people are like, I would need to add more stuff to keep it going, right? And that's, that's like a huge misconception. You can always take something away and often that'll be, that can often be just as interesting, which is, is kind of like a little counterintuitive. So I'm gonna take the kick away. Clap comes in. Okay, great. Super simple. Um, just to give people, you know, some insights on how I'm thinking about the structure. Uh, you know, I'm listening to it and just keep feeling it out and thinking about things happening in either, you know, eight bars, four bars, two bars. And with, you know, there's never any rules, you know, like I think a lot of house songs are pretty structured by eight bar phrases. Um, a lot of techno can be all over the place. And I think with something like this, Dude, if you feel like things are boring and you want to change something, go for it. If you're just using a 909, it's really like, it's going to sound cohesive and kind of like natural pretty much under any situation. And so um, I'm going to label these things just to keep things organized. So this is beat one. Okay. And you do this click and type in command R. I'm going to do, uh, and I'm going to do break, break one. And then this I'll do beat two and for beat two i want some i want things to like intensify a little bit so i'm gonna go from the closed hat to the open hat all right so let's see let's feel the energy all right nice okay so here's one of the best ways to get a little bit more dynamic out of a, out of like a transitional moment. You could obviously add a bunch of stuff, but just in this theme of like simplicity, you can also take something away. Let's listen with just this hi-hat removed from this, this moment. To me, decisions like that can make a huge difference, especially when the songs get more complex. So yeah, there's times where, you know, you have all of these layers and figuring out 
you know, ooh, let's put a pause right before this big impactful moment that can often yield amazing results. So here, let's, and what we can also explore, you know, let's say we wanted um, an even, you know, we could explore like even less stuff happening, you know, uh, explore a bigger pause, check it out. It works too. And, you know, I think this is where things can start to get interesting. So, you know, let's say, I don't, this open hi-hat thing is fine, but I am kind of curious about trying to get like uh, maybe some faster hi-hats perhaps or something more intricate. So I'm just gonna listen. You know what, I'm gonna copy this over, go back to this close one and see if I can just add a couple more. Okay, so here, is what we do. I'm just, oops. Cool. Okay, and you know, I think if you have a bunch of notes in a row, one thing you can always do is mess with the, with how loud they are. Um, I often like to do things where, you know, maybe the notes start quiet and get louder. It doesn't need that much. Let's just keep it simple. Okay. And you know what? All right, let's listen to what we got. Okay, I have a funny idea. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, instead of this being a hi-hat, I'm gonna make this a clap. <laughs> and then maybe I'll do that for a couple beats and then I'll make it back into the hi-hat. Kind of a funny idea, but this is like what I mean by, I, you know, I think to get cohesive music, a big key is to use the same ideas in as many different ways as possible. So it's not about, it's not about necessarily coming up with a bajillion ideas, but rather coming up with a small number of ideas that you can twist and turn into all of these variations to keep it interesting. Let's listen one more time. Okay, you know what? And here's, here's what's like so funny. I did too much. So check this out. <laughs> I can get a pretty sick moment by just taking away stuff. Okay, pretty interesting. That's so much better. And it's just way less stuff. I don't know if people agree with me. Yeah, and I know this beat is like not that exciting, but you know, this is, this is what it's all about. Like, dude, Jeff Mills, because he's a legend, can use just that nine or nine and rock the shit out of the festival. And I really believe that you could make a beat that's just as sick on Ableton with the stock Ableton nine or nine, because uh, you don't have to do it in real time and you can you know, mess around, try things out, see what feels right. So let's just try and keep things going forward. And I'm, I'm just thinking, how can I stretch this as much as possible? Okay, so I feel like, honestly, this moment, I wanna use this later. And let's just go back here and do this. Okay, so I'm just take, you know, I love taking a, a pattern that was with one sound and just moving it to another. So I did close hi-hat back to the open hat. I'm gonna make it, use this knob over here, you can click shift tab to move between the MIDI notes, which is where you put, put everything in and the instrument itself. Shift tab, you can also click here. Um, I'm probably not the best teacher for like the basic, basic stuff, but I try my best. All right, so here is, I'm just gonna make it a little bit shorter. And you know what, I'm gonna do a little crash. So what you can do if you have a loop, 
click and do command E to break it off so that you can do an individual thing. Put a little crash there. All right, let's see. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do, I'm down for this clap thing to start happening. So I'm gonna just copy that over. I also want the hi-hats to continue, so. And then here, I'm feeling like everything should stop, um, or at least the kick should stop. And then let's do, go to the hats, okay, this is, Pads. And by the way, I can tell what I'm doing because I'm just looking at the dots to know which patterns. So and I think I'll also cut this to add a crash on this beat. Okay, I'm not really. All right. And then here, I'm feeling like um, I want to just take, I'll try taking out this tom. I want to see if that does anything. All right, let's listen back. And I'm just trying to feel it out and just think, I'm trying to not think so much and just do, which is hard while trying to talk. losing too much momentum there. So I'm gonna just repeat this whole section by doing shift command D. Um, and this is a huge, for everyone who was asking about like, how do I structure songs? Um, shift command D, highlighting a section and doing shift command D so that you copy a whole section that you've created is really powerful. So I'm gonna also just uh, make this a new color so that we can keep track of what's happening. So I'm gonna make this blue. And maybe here, I have an idea, maybe I'll add some ride symbols. So I'm gonna do this. And let's listen to how that, this sounds right off the bat. Okay, it's pretty intense. One thing that I like to do with the ride is make all the ones, if I do this type of pattern, I will grab all the ones that are with the kick drums, which are on the downbeats, um, every other, and then I will take the velocity of all them and drag it down, and it'll sound a little bit more funky. I don't know if you guys can tell the difference, but here's one. Here's the other way. And then also, I'm not ready to go full Ride symbol long, that's like the peak of our song. So I'm just gonna bring this decay time, oops, wrong thing, decay time down. And then, you know what, maybe I'm gonna add a like extra note. Okay, cool. I'm also gonna speed it up. That's fun. And then what I'm gonna do, let's see, so. You know, that kind of works. And what I'm gonna do for this section, instead of uh, having the ride continue on every beat, I'm just gonna do this. Let's see how that feels. Maybe another crash, just cause that's what I'm hearing. And I'm really just not thinking. I'm just like, ooh, this could be cool. It's fine. Don't love it. But here's, a, here's like a fun idea. So, you know, I think the biggest thing that I want to take away is like, you know, this idea of simplicity. I have this one idea in the beat so far that goes like this. 
da 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 okay <laughs> here check this out what if we really fucking lean into that and just put a bunch of sounds that do this one idea and kind of like cut everything else maybe i'll keep crashing let's see let's see if this is some jeff mills shit maybe Okay, cool. Could, and I think it has potential, but it's a little, it's not ready yet. First, this tom should go. Um, and what I wanna try is, okay, so check this out. I have a loop of four bars. Um, there's different ways to do this, but I could just click Command J to make them one big loop so that I can edit all of these notes individually. Another thing you can do is click Duplicate Loop to take one idea that you had, make it longer. We could change one thing. You hear that? So that's another way to do the same thing. Um, in this case, I'm gonna do this. And I'm gonna begin with, with just the kick. I mean, just the clap. And I'm gonna add the hi-hat, then I add both, then I have the crash. And then maybe I'll put like a snare roll at the end. And one thing that I'll do is just to go fucking crazy, I'm going to make this smaller and then just click Command D a bunch of times and it's gonna sound like garbage probably, but it'll be a massive moment for the club. And then once this happens, I'm gonna take the whole thing and do Command D again on this whole section that we just went over. And now I'll change the colors so that we can keep on following along. So now purple. Okay, great. So let's, probably the most epic breakdown of all time. Okay, cool. Not amazing, but it's almost house music. Or you know what I think? So, you know, one thing that could also help this idea is to play with how long the clap is. I'm gonna fuck with this decay knob. And maybe should we, should we do the ride cymbal? Let's try it. So I'm gonna try fucking with these. Maybe, I don't know, let's give it a shot. All right, so we're gonna talk about automation and to do automation, all of these knobs in Ableton can be assignable. I love using the 909 because it has a bunch of these knobs really clearly labeled and it's super easy if you're brand new to the program. So the way you do it, click this. I'm on Ableton 9, so everyone who got a free trial of Ableton 10, you now have a better program than I do, congratulations. Um, what I'm gonna do is just bring this up like so, um, or yeah, let's try it. Okay, it's almost there. So snare sounds a little quiet to me. I'm just gonna make it a little bit louder. Okay, and I do that by here. Okay, great. Sweet. So um, let's, li let's listen back a little bit more. And I think it's time to maybe try adding new sound. I want to wrap up kind of soon. And guys, look, I know this beat might not be the most inspired beat of all time, but you can actually make dope shit if you take your time and find the simple ideas that feel really good. You can actually make something very legit with these sounds. Um, and you'll probably be make something that's better than me, which uh, you know, I would be inspired, and then you can teach me, which would be great. Because I'm trying to learn. Um, yeah. Ooh, I forgot to take up the snap. Okay, and then here, let's do something crazy. Let's do like claps back on every four, on every beat, because that's a great way to fucking build the energy.
Okay, cool. So this is like this. These are definitely drums. Uh, let's try adding. Let's try adding a sound. So MIDI tracks. Um, let's do. Okay, so over here, um, instruments, sounds. What do I want? Um, oh, by the way, quick tip: just use the presets when you're new. Presets are super chill. If I were making a house song, one sound that's like super nice that I like is this. There's a, like a muted bass sound. That's really good. And I'm, I'm gonna use that for now, even though we don't need a bass line, but here's what's cool. I'm gonna use it for a high melody. <laughs> Let's see if this works. You know what, fuck it now. I changed my mind. We're gonna use operator, something even more simple. Um, instruments, operator. Okay. All right, so here, let's, let's just go to a part of the song where there's a bunch of stuff happening. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna make another loop, highlight, right click. And uh, where's the insert MIDI thing? I don't even know Ableton. Um, here we go, Shift Command M. And I'm gonna just put in some notes. Do right click, 16th notes. Okay, so now I'm gonna fuck with the release and I know this might, I might lose some people, but I wanna show you how you can, this is the most boring sound of all time. It's a sine wave. It's literally the most basic sound and it's super boring, but I think you can do so much cool stuff with it. So I'm gonna mess with the, the decay. Let's see if this changes anything. So, so this decay knob, I'm going to just kind of mess with it a bit. And if you click Command B, you can do the pencil tool. But you know what, it needs to release too. So here, I'm gonna just fucking draw a bunch of random shit. Take this moment here. Okay, let's do something fun. Right click, freeze track. All right, now we will work with some audio real quick and I know we're nearly at an hour and I'm trying to keep things concise, but let's just see how far we can get. So what I'm gonna do, I'm, I copied and pasted this short note and I'm just gonna like <laughs> fucking copy it a bunch and try and make a, a more exciting pattern. This might be a horrible. No, it's not that good. Um, let's simplify it a little bit. Okay, I have an idea. Oh yes, okay, so I'm gonna undo what I just did a little while ago because I thought of something better. So I'm gonna take all of this, copy it, and I'm gonna make one difference. I'm gonna add another note. And everything that I just did, I'm gonna move that over here because <laughs> uh, then, because this section for this like minimal techno drum beat, it doesn't really need, it doesn't really need it here. more things to happen, less things to happen. Okay, 
you know what? Don't like this, but what I'm gonna do, copy it, I'm gonna duplicate, I'm gonna make a new channel of this where the, the volume is not changing, or the, the, the release. Copy this down. That. All right, so yeah, guys, really fucking challenging to make music with like such limited means, you know, just like a 909 and one sound. But if, you, and I'm, I'm trying to just use one note, I'm not even trying to have a melody. This shit, like, dude, I'm flexing. I'm trying so hard to do to do like shit, and I think the the key is just like, you know, it is possible. It's just about finding the most simple ideas that still feel good, you know. And I'm, I don't really like it. Like, honestly, it might just be better just one note. Yeah. Okay, one thing that could be funny, um, if you click this, uh, let's see, how do I do this? I'm gonna do, um, change the uh, pitch bend. So click E uh, to bring up this shit. The beginners, you guys are probably lost at this point, but that's fine. And I'm just gonna bring this all the way down. Let's see what this does, might, might not do too much. <laughs> I hate it. It's so not necessary. Okay, the one thing that I will do is make this. Oh shit, none of this automation got copied. So I'll just do this. I'll have it start quick. And then I want it to get short right at the very end. Okay. And then I, just to make so you know, we have this break section once already. Here's the first time. I'm just gonna see if I can add maybe like one more element to, you know, maybe instead of the this like ride, maybe it's snare. Yeah, let's try this. Maybe. No. Um, instead of this pattern, I'm just gonna try something else. Oh, you know what? This could be cool. Da -da 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 -da. This is what I'm hearing. Okay, so I'm gonna do this, copy it. I'm gonna have a, let's try this. I know this sounds so dumb, but I'm just flying by the seat of my pants and trying not to judge it. Um, and then let's do, let's. And then let's just do. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, copy it over, and then maybe I'll do it. The crash. People are like, "Wow, Justin is the worst producer." <laughs> cool. And you know, I think one one last thing that that's worth doing. Um, you know, or thinking about when you're trying to structure out a song is contrast. Go from a busy section to a simple section. And so let's say, you know what, one last thing that might help this moment, because um, I'm not super stoked on it yet, I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna do a ton of ride cymbals. And I'm gonna do the same trick that I did earlier where they started out short and got longer. Let's try that. And to do that, I'm just gonna go here, copy this over and paste it. Let's try it. OK, 
okay, sick. <laughs> I'm down with this, even though it's super dumb. Um, I'm just gonna have everything end on this last beat. Da -da 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 -da. And then here, I'm gonna take out the hi-hats. Okay. And here. Okay, guys, we're coming up on an hour. Um, let's, let's just like take a look at this masterpiece. It, you might hate this song. You might be like, I'll never make anything like this. But I would say this is, it's crazy because making techno is, is a little bit more challenging with, you know, the rhythms. You can do like almost anything. But, you know, for house music, you can literally just start with a 909 drum beat, one other sound. And maybe that's what I'll do tomorrow is I'll like do a house song because this is like a pretty ambitious first thing to do. But Let's just listen real quick and think about, you know, how there really are not many ideas in this song. And even if you don't like it, you can admit that the structure of it is, you know, kind of at least has a shape to it. It's all about, you know, adding elements, taking them away, using the same ideas in different ways. So it's more about the concepts here than about what I'm doing. this thing comes in but I do like I do appreciate it This section right here, I heard this. This could be twice as long and no ride symbol the first time, then the ride symbol comes in. And so this is just how to stretch things out, you know? All right, so check it out. Let's listen to that one more time. Um, I need to copy this automation over. Okay, boom. <laughs> sign thing in and all right it's one let's i want to take some time for questions um before i do uh so the challenge for to for tonight um yeah 16 bars just use the 909 you can use one other sound what is the dopest thing you can do like do anything send it to me um before before 10 you know maybe 8 p.m pacific standard time um you can message it to me on Instagram. That works. Um, probably not, yeah, well, there's a lot for me to learn here, but um, let's try that. And winner, or winners, if there's a bunch of cool ones, um, will get free sample pack and some unreleased tracks. Um, let's see what you can do. You know, I think it doesn't need to be complicated and it's all just about using this one simple, collection of sounds in a way that's fun, you know, cause I think the, the key to having fun is just not getting overwhelmed. And if you use this one drum machine, you immediately will sound like an old school classic house producer who owns a, you know, like $7,000 piece of equipment. So I hope this is helpful. I hope, uh, I hope some of you have not lost total respect for, my production abilities with trying to keep it this simple but this is like this is all about foundational skills and if you use the 909 for instance your ears are going to get used to how loud the clap should be compared to the hi-hat 
how loud the kick should be compared to those elements. It's just, it's, it saves you a couple steps so that you can start having fun while training your ear and your intuition. And I think that's one of the most valuable parts. I also just want to reiterate, I have gotten songs signed that just use this one drum machine, the stock Ableton preset. So it's like, you're also just on your way to making some music that like has serious potential. So even though, it, and it's, it's backwards because you think, oh, it's so simple, it might be cheating, you know, but it, it's true. So I think let's take a break, hopefully. Um, oh, there's still people here, fuck yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, are we allowed to use processing on our loop? Um, yeah, go for it. Do it, do, you know, do whatever you want. I, I, I think the, the key is more like, if you're an experienced producer, try just limiting yourself to the 909 sounds, you know, have fun with it, but what can you do with them? You know, and I think you will, it might yield some results that you would never have gotten otherwise. So um, let me take some questions. Um, <laughs> shout out Steve the Seagull. Um, yeah, feel free to, let's see, can we do, you know, raise, and I don't even, I'm so bad at Zoom. Yeah, does anyone have questions? Type them into the chat. Let's see how that works. Who's going to send their demo as a system bar loop? Where can we find the recordings? I will, um, I will send an email blast. Um, why do you use Ableton 9? Send SoundCloud link to you. Um, SoundCloud link is totally chill. The reason I use Ableton 9 is because I have not taken the time to upgrade. It is, pure laziness. Um, do you typically add reverb? No, not, I don't like, I don't always add reverb. I sometimes do. It's just uh, do whatever feels right, but it's never, you never need to. Um, and I, I often like songs that are, have dry sounding drums, but some reverb is cool too. Do you usually change volume of each drum element in the pack? You don't need to change very, very much. How do you add swing? I will go over that tomorrow. Um, okay. Oh, nice. Josh Walker has a good reference for stuff. Do you start with the drum beats most often? Uh, I will often start songs in many different ways. Um, and how do you pull up the red lines to just velocity released on the grid? Danny, click, double click on a MIDI region and then just hover over the bar go until it turns a different color and then click and drag up and down. Um, how much of the drum beat do you fill out before moving on to bass lines and top, top lines? Um, you know, I think it's never methodical. It's never methodical, dude. I'm always just going with intuition. And if you're unsure, just try the first thing that comes to your head and, you know, take it step by step. Um, guys, thank you again for taking the time to chat i really hope i know this is kind of like a weird experiment definitely for me um i think tomorrow like i said i'm gonna do you know try and apply the same concepts but do something that's even more simple and um see how far we can get you know we got how much music did we make you know a minute and a half <laughs> just uh, for fun if i doubled this whole thing and changed a bunch of stuff in the second half, we would be at like a three minute track. I would need to do a bunch of changes. Maybe I would cut out this section, et cetera, add an outro, but just wanna show like, when you put in a bunch of work for some structure, you can copy the whole thing and keep it going. So how long need the idea be? Uh, do, do 16 bars, try that. Um, yeah, so have fun with this drum machine. It is crazy what you can do with it. It really is insane. And, you know, we'll just run it back tomorrow. Tomorrow also, Nikki Nair is going to do a guest lecture. And I'm gonna show you some ways to immediately turn the, even this like basic sounding drum machine into something that sounds even more textured and with character. There's like this one plugin that I slap it on, it's free. And it literally Im immediately sounds like the record was made in the 90s. It's, it's an insane plugin and I have to do some sort of tease to, to keep you guys coming back. And then on the final day, just to give you an overview, I will discuss 
ways to get songs across the finish line. And if there's time, I'll also talk about how to get, how to release your songs and that side of things. I don't know if there will be time, but there's so much that I wanna talk about and I just appreciate getting the chance to, to share this stuff. So give me all the feedback in the world because I've never done anything like this. And I could, use, I could learn for how to do a better job on my end. So message me, I'll be checking my messages and stuff. Guys, from wherever you are in the world, thank you for tuning in. If you're American, happy Thanksgiving. If you're not American, happy Thanksgiving and, and much love, everybody. Um, whew, what an intense little day. Um, I will catch you tomorrow, guys. Peace. Bye, Justin. Later. <laughs> was it was That was hilarious. Thank you, okay. Thank you, Justin. Thanks, brother. See you, yeah, Justin. Thanks. Bye-bye. Later. Peace, yeah. peace, peace.